I had a very difficult time uh, at one point and, and uh, because of deaths in the family and broken relationships and I went to Hawaii to see if I could feel better and initially I didn't but once I got underneath the surface of the water and saw the coral reef inhabitants and the very first fish was a a yellow trumpet fish. It sort of looks like a soprano saxophone. It's this tiny little fins, long snout, and this glaring, beautiful yellow color. It was like not possible to remain depressed after having made that encounter. And then I increasingly got more and more committed to protect that environment and uh, be trained as a diver to to actually map coral reefs so that they can become uh, protected sanctuaries. And then I wrote music for it. It's like it never stops. It's just such a source of beauty and inspiration and livelihoods for so many people. The coral reefs around the world are dying. And this is an extremely urgent crisis since they are a vital life support system for our entire planet. We are now at the Stockholm Resilience Center and we are about to meet its executive director, Professor Johan Rockström. And he's also stated that music is not just a luxury for the ears, but a very important part of communicating science and community engagement. Science alone, the rational alone, is not the pathway to global sustainability. It is, in fact, the combination of the emotional and the rational, music and your beautiful, you know, world acclaimed mus music is, is not something just um, that we sort of say have as, as, um, as, as a beauty of our lives. It is, in my mind, a strategic pathway for a mind shift to reconnect our own lives and our own prosperity. We have found as scientists through many, many attempts of communicating our findings that just delivering numbers is not very effective. But if you deliver numbers with an emotional connection, music, photography, film, something that we as human beings associate very strongly with, so you can reach both the heart and the brain, has uh, a very important you know, way of, of contributing to deeper insights. A lot of things make me hopeful. Uh, you ha kind of have to be an optimist to work on the coral reef challenge. And, and conservation is tough in a lot of the places where more of the reefs are. So I've been encouraged by all the amazing things that people are doing at the community level. And so despite the global challenges that reefs face from climate change and other global stressors, if you want to feel more optimistic about coral reefs, then you need to stand on your head because it looks a lot better from the bottom up than it does from the top down. When people come to Hawaii, they take what they can from the culture in a way that benefits them. And uh, it's very rare that they'll leave something behind that actually um, not only recognizes something in Hawaiian history, like the Kumulipo, but actually honors it. media like art and music to remind people that they have a rich history and that this goes back over generations, it connects them back to that place. And I really think that's an important part of our culture is connecting um, into, the, into the environment to remind us that we're not separate from this place, that it is in our, it is in our blood, it is part of our genealogy and that's where it should be. And your, your piece is an excellent representation of that. The bottom line is reefs are a legacy for all of us and I think if we let reefs succumb to the pressures that we're putting on them we will live in a more impoverished world. Oh, 